there, my name is Tamara Birch, and in this video I'm going to share with you two examples of how I've drawn dog noses. I've decided to do two different examples for this video because not the same technique will be useful for every single portrait of a commission that you draw. The dogs are all different, their head shapes are different, their noses are different lengths. The first technique I'm going to show you is more of a blurred out nose. The nose is on a shepherd and the the focus is really the eyes so it just makes sense and it makes for a more beautiful portrait for the nose to be sort of blurred out and to bring that focus up onto his eyes that's the first part of this video the second part will be a very highly detailed nose it's on a boxer and the nose is all smooshed in and crinkly and um, textured and bumpy and so I will show you how I went about to create that really detailed textured nose and my hope for you is that by the end of this video you'll be able to take the techniques that you've learned and use them to adjust your own portraits so that it makes sense so that the nose is appropriate for the, the portrait or commission that you're doing so let's get started of course the first material that you need is um, paper to draw on. So I like to use this Bristol vellum paper. So I've got them in different sizes. This one here is 9 by 12, 11 by 14, 14 by 17. This paper is great because it's thick so your um, portrait is done on a quality piece of paper and it's got a nice tooth on it for drawing so it can hold layers of graphite or colored pencil. Using a good quality paper is actually pretty important. You don't want to start trying to draw a portrait on computer paper or something like that. I think you'll just be disappointed with the results and your paper will not hold up if you're trying to erase, things like that. Um, paper isn't that expensive either. This pad here cost me just over $15 for 15 sheets, so it's like a dollar per sheet. Um, so as far as materials go for that, it's not too bad. These are the pencils that I usually use. I typically um, do a drawing with about four different pencils with different hardnesses. So um, here you can see a 2H, a B, a 4B, and then I, I've actually got some black colored pencils instead of um, using a graphite with a softer lead. So like maybe a 6B all the way up to 9B. Um, and the reason that I do that is because I, I find that you can get a better depth with the uh, colored pencil and the biggest reason that I use these instead of a, a softer graphite is because of the glare. So when you're doing a drawing, sometimes when you're using a really soft lead, you get this sheen um, that you can see in certain lights, like if you're walking by the painting and you're at different angles, it's just like a glare. So it actually does the opposite of what you want when you want it the, to be the darkest color it turns out that it reflects the light and it shines almost like a highlight instead so that is a reason why I uh, tend to use the black colored pencils for my darkest areas so um, here I've got a Faber-Castell one and a Caran d'Ache colored pencil. Something else that I use all the time are blending sticks so I use them either like just on their own blending they tend to get you can see that they get pretty dirty after a while which can be actually super nice when you're trying to do like a nice soft you can color that with them almost just like it, it was a pencil but it's, it's a really soft blended type of like layer of graphite rather than a, the scratchy um, what you get with your pencil but then you use these to blend them out and then if I want an area, like I don't want to add any more graphite because eventually the graphite will build up on the tips of these and then if you rub it onto your paper, you'll be adding graphite to it. It'll make the area darker. If I still need to like blend in a small area, a lot of times I'll take a Kleenex and put it over the tip and just use that to blend or you can use like a cotton bud or something like that. These ones have tips on them, so they're kind of nice. And then um, pencil sharpener for obvious reasons. And then of course erasers. So I've got a variety of erasers. The ones that I use the most, my favorite eraser is this Tombow eraser. It's a mono zero eraser and it's got such a tiny fine little um, tip fantastic for erasing small small areas or even if you wanted to create texture on skin or the dog noses which you'll see or lifting out hairs things like that they're really fantastic um, I actually you'll see in this video I couldn't find my Tombow mono eraser so I ended up using this little guy 
a couple of times. It's good too, but it's just not the same. Anyway, and then there's a kneaded eraser. You can make points with that. You can do all kinds of things with that. I've got all kinds of erasers with different shapes and sizes, but honestly, I mean, as long as you've got an eraser, even if you have a normal eraser like this, if you need to get into a really fine, fine area or something, you can um, slice this and you can cut it into shapes that can that will allow you to lift off graphite using just one of these kinds of erasers, which work fantastic too. That's kind of like an overview of the materials that I use. So I'm starting this part by sticking the reference photo that I'm working from up onto the screen so you can see what I'm seeing when I'm doing this. Here I'm starting by layering down the darkest areas using my black Faber-Castell colored pencil. So the way that I approach drawing and the way that I look at drawing is basically there's a whole bunch of little tiny pieces to a puzzle and when you combine them all you end up getting a big picture. So I'll go through and I will pick out all of the little darkest black pieces of the puzzle. And so I'm just scanning over the area that I'm looking at, that I'm working on at the moment, choosing all of the darkest areas and sticking them down in the shapes that I see. It's just little shape after little shape and you just stick them together like a puzzle. There's areas where it helps when you just lay down a large layer of graphite in a certain shade that you know will be the lightest shade of that area and then you can start to build up your darker layers on top of that. Another thing that I do want to say is that the lighter that you can press and then blend and then build up your layers that way rather than pressing really hard except for in those darkest areas as long as you're sure that you're not messing up that area, you always want to preserve the tooth of your paper. So try and lay down, you can see here that I'm laying down a nice soft area and then I'll go in and lay down a soft area. I'm not, I'm never really pressing very hard unless it's the darkest, darkest area and I know that I've got the right shape. But basically, you just wanna look at your picture, look at your reference picture and see those shapes, really see them and try and keep the proportions correct and all the proportions of the shapes around it. You can see even in my outline, I've got little shapes like little pieces of a puzzle and they my outline it's all put together to make one shape one giant shape which I'll use as a reference for filling it in here I'm using um, I'm blending out the layer that I've just laid down here I'm using a blending stump uh, with a Kleenex around it. I use this technique to blur out my edges and also here you can see I'm using it as well to lay down um, a base layer of graphite. So your smudging tools are a fantastic way to do this. It ends up making everything soft and gradual and you get all of those um, gradations rather than just pencil here, paper here, or it's dark here, it's light here, it blends everything nicely so you can um, achieve like a higher level of realism using this technique. I'm not going to keep this all at real time because obviously it takes a long time to do a portrait. I think that each of these portraits took me between 12 and 15 hours, maybe 16 hours, depending on the amount of detail. So I'm going to end up speeding this up you can still get the idea of what I'm doing and then I'll just pause when it's appropriate and slow it down and let you know what I'm doing so here's some sweet listening music for you here you can see I'm using an eraser to start lifting out some of the details so um, rather than trying to 
draw around lighter areas, sometimes it is easier to just lay down your graphite and then pick the details out using an eraser. I use that technique a lot. So here you can see I'm using um, a triangular shaped eraser to pick out my details. Usually I'd use my Tombow Mono Zero, but like I said earlier in the video, I couldn't find it at this time. So, but I mean, all the erasers work. It's just that that one happens to be my favorite. Now I'm starting to lay down a few hairs. Because this nose is soft focus and it's kind of got a little bit of a blurry effect to it, um, my pencil is not super sharp. But I just want to point out that usually when doing hair, it's super important to keep your pencil as sharp as you can. So you end up sharpening it <laughs> all the time, which is a little bit annoying, but it really, really is important. It will give you much better results to always have a very sharp point on your lead and um, to lay down those hairs. So I just wanted to point that out that my pencil for these hairs is a little bit more dull and that is because I'm not as worried the nose is a little bit out of soft focus and those whiskers on his muzzle if you can see that they're really kind of blurred out so having a super sharp point on the lead of my pencil isn't as important as it typically is when you're doing hair. Here's another example of how you can see it's kind of just like pieces of a puzzle. So here I'm picking out areas that I feel are as dark as this black colored pencil using it with a light touch and um, I'm just sort of keeping each one in proportion and laying down all these little tiny puzzle pieces and the more of these pieces that you end up filling in then the easier it is to see the other pieces that surround it and connect them all just like a puzzle. Honestly, when I'm doing commissions, my outlines are very light and because they're changing sometimes as you go, it's best to outline your drawing using a really hard pencil, usually a 2H or something like that. Also, when you're creating your outline, be sure that you don't press too hard because if you create um, ridges in your paper, you'll always see them. If you lay graph out down over top of them, there'll be a line where your paper has been indented and the graphite can't properly get down into there. It will really <laughs> screw you up and you'll have to start over. So just be sure that when you're doing your outlines, you do it very nice and soft and very nice and light so that you can erase it and adjust it easily whenever you need to. I've created my outline much darker than I normally would if I was doing a commission and that is so that you could see it in this video because I finally that sometimes when the outline is so light, it's not as easy to see it on the video, but here this way you can see all the little puzzle pieces that I've created that you're just putting together. And also when I created this outline, even though it is a softer or darker pencil, I know that I've pressed light enough that I'll be able to erase it and that I haven't dented my paper in any way. Maybe you've noticed in the top right hand corner of the screen that there's a piece of paper covering the drawing and this is obviously just so that I'm not smudging my outline that I've got underneath there with my hand so that I'm not getting oils from my hands onto my paper and so that none of the graphite that I might have on the palm of my hand or the side of my hand from the drawing that I'm doing will transfer and smear all over the rest of my painting.
I found my favorite eraser. So here you can watch me pick out some details using the tip of this. And so here I've pretty much come to the end of drawing this nose. I mean, obviously the muzzle and all the hairs and stuff, I still have to do that, but that will be for a different lesson. So here you go, it's the finished nose, and we can move on to part two, which is the highly detailed nose on a boxer. Okay, so here I am getting started with laying down once again the darkest areas of my boxer nose. I always start with laying down the darkest areas too because with white paper you've got the lightest area, then you lay down your dark areas and then you've got the entire spectrum. So it's easier for you to see what values of color need to go in between. So I do this whether I'm drawing in color or whether I'm drawing in black and white. You can see the whole tonal range from very, very black to super, super blown out white, your brightest highlights. So um, here I go, laying down the nostril. Since I've explained most of this process, and it's the same process, it's just that the reference photo is different, so it's going to end up looking different. The same process, I'm just going to go ahead and speed this up so that you don't get too bored. Okay, so here's a technique that I really like to use on bumpy, bumpy noses is just when I start to color in that whole area that's got lots and lots of little bumps and texture, I draw little circles, little squiggly circles all along that surface and then it kind of fills it in, but it fills it in in a way that you can really pick out bumps that you need to highlight and then those um, marks that I'm making become the low points so like you can darken them up all of the squiggles you darken certain areas up so that you bring depth and a shape to the, the shadow part which would be where I'm laying down the mark. You'll be able to understand more what I mean by that as I continue to draw it out. Okay, so here I'm um, deepening up some of those areas around the bumps to make the shadows. And then here I'm using my 2H pencil and I'm just coloring over the entire area. Just laying down a, um, a layer of graphite. None of these bumps 
even the highlighted parts are white so that's why I'm going in with the 2H which is the lightest pencil that I'm using and just coloring over the whole area and getting a nice layer of graphite down now here you can see I'm doing the same thing but with my um, black colored pencil which I'm taking out just like those pieces of puzzle you know when I was um, laying down little patches of a certain shade of the of pencil on the blurred out soft focus nose well I'm doing the same thing I just have that texture underneath which I've already laid down so I'm still taking out patches of um, areas where it's darker and laying down a nice soft layer of colored pencil to sort of start to create my form of my nose it's still just all about seeing so you're looking for patches of color or patches of a specific tone and you're laying those down in little shapes that you're, you're just training your eye to see really that's all that drawing is it's just training your eye to see now I'm going in with my colored pencil and just pressing harder in areas that are darker. So again, little puzzle pieces, just filling them in. Some of the little bumps will be more prominent because they're highlighted on my reference photo. So in certain areas, it's gonna be lighter, but I'll still um, add some detail to those to like deepen up the shadows in between. And maybe I might even pluck out some highlights with my eraser. Just like in the previous nose in part one, I'm using my blending stick to smooth out the transitions between the different tones of graphite. So it just makes it nice and smooth, it makes it look more realistic. And then I'm gonna go in and pick out some details with my eraser because once you smooth and blend all of the graphite over, if you did have some highlights, you may just um, cover those up so then you can use your little eraser to pluck them back out again. Okay, I just want you to watch this technique right here because here I'm gonna take um, a darker pencil. In this area, I've got a layer of graphite already down. Then I'm going to take my pencil and lay down some little dots which are um, going to be the shadows. And then after all those little darker dots are laid down, on top of those dots, I'm going to take my eraser and pluck out the highlights. So just by doing that, you have a layer of graphite, then you make some darker dots for your shading, or, or maybe there are more lines than dots, whatever the case may be, and then you pluck out the little shadow. All of a sudden, you've made little bumps all over your nose, just like that.
Here's a good example of me using my little Tombow eraser. I love this little thing. After I misplaced it, I went and bought a few others so that I never run into that situation again. Here I go in with a darker pencil and just um, deepen the shadows underneath to really make them pop out. Okay, right here, what you're seeing me do is cleaning my eraser and I'm also shaping it at the same time that I do this. So sometimes it gets so loaded up with graphite, it almost slips across your drawing rather than picking up any more graphite. It's just too loaded up. And so you gotta clean it off. And while doing so, you might as well make it into the shape that's useful for you. As I do my drawing, the entire thing, I always erase the outline that I have down and then use the very, very faint line that's left as my guide. So I never just keep my outline on the page as it is. I always erase it before I start actually drawing over top of it. And then here I am filling in some of the hairs around the nose and this is useful for me because then I can, once you lay down those dark areas, then you can see how your nose will look in comparison to the rest of the picture. Sometimes it's hard to get an idea of um, how dark something needs to end up because the surrounding area is so white so it might look like it's dark enough and then you find out that maybe you should have made it darker all along. So it's very useful before you completely finish an area to fill in some of the darker areas of um, the drawing that surround the part that you're working on and then you have um, a reference for your eye and you can see how the area that you've just finished drawing compares to those deepest shades that are surrounding it. Then you'll know if it's dark enough or if you need to go back in and add some more shading or maybe pluck out some more highlights. And then so here's the pretty much finished nose. I have to still do the surrounding areas obviously, but for the nose, I think that you've gotten a good idea of the process that I use to create a dog's nose. And really it's the same process, whether it's soft and blurred out or if it's very highly detailed, it's just all about seeing all those little tiny shapes and putting them together as a puzzle. And also working in layers, laying down your dark, your dark, dark areas, putting those down first and then building up from there. Maybe it would even be useful for you to just have your four pencils and then of course with those four pencils you can make a range of values because the, if you press harder the darker it'll be and all the way up to a very light touch. So you can start by your darkest pencil, lay in the darkest areas and then, and then you can keep making those little shapes using a lighter touch until you're ready to use your next pencil. So your next lightest pencil, which in my case would be usually a two, or sorry, usually a four B. And then I would start by laying down some of the darker areas in there. I say that, but honestly, I kind of jump around a lot, but that's just because that's the way that I've, I've now can see. But if you're just beginning and you want to just sort of do it in, have a method where you can just do it very um, step by step, then that could be a really great way for you to start out. So there we go. We've got two completed dog noses and I hope that you can kind of see the process that I use and the techniques that I use because they're very similar even for the soft and out of focus nose and the more highly detailed sharp focus nose. A lot of the techniques are actually the same. So really, hopefully, you'll be able to train your eye and then you can apply these techniques to whatever um, portrait or commission or drawing you're working on. These techniques apply to way more than just dog noses. Basically, this is just how I draw. I take the little pieces that I see, 
and put them together just like they were a puzzle. And I just want to say that one of the biggest things um, to remember is to be patient when you're trying to draw a really realistic portrait. So it's really funny for me to see hours of work condensed into a few minutes because it really is hours of work. So I just want to remind you that patience is key and just keep working at it. Just find all those little shapes and just put them together. I really hope you got something useful out of this video and if you did, I would love it if you would hit the like button. If you are interested in seeing any more videos like this, I'm going to be posting up tutorials and product reviews and all sorts of art videos. If you are interested in that, please subscribe to my channel. I would love it so much. Thanks so much for watching.